tied up with strings. These are few of my Cinderella! See, that's just what we were talking about, Cinderella. You and your queen, eh? Don't you think you're just a bit obsessive? Oh, but I love to keep things tidy. Is there anything more wonderful than the shine of a polished spoon? Or the calming scent of an air freshener just plugged in? Really, Sin, you need to get out. Come to the mall with us. The mall? That would be great. Really? You will go? Sure. There are a lot of things that need serious scrubbing there. I could spend a month just on the tables at the food court. You're missing the point. The only time we ever see you these days is online. And even then, you usually log off as soon as I'm cleaning the screen. I'm sorry, it's just cleaning is my passion. And I've sort of found some new friends around the house. Those are not friends. Those are rodents. Oh, please, Cinderella. Now you won't listen to us. Oh, this cellar needs to be scrubbed. I just got this new mop. I'm sure the floor will be as shiny as new in no time. You work too hard, Cinderella. And those stepsisters of yours don't do any work at all. You must put your foot down. Why do they not turn the work to be done? Oh, no, 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 no. They have given me shelter. I have nowhere else to go. But that home is yours too, right? Your father married your stepmother so that you will be looked after well. And you are as much as a daughter as your stepsisters. Girls, girls, stop. Please stop. I have so much ironing to do. I have to plan for tomorrow's breakfast. Oh, please, Angela, you need to stop allowing people to walk all over you. If I were you, I would decide for a day that they make breakfast. I have so much work to do. I better be going, girls. Uh, she is impossible. Her stepmother and her sisters take advantage of her goodness. Goodness? I think Cinderella does not value herself. Poor Cinderella. I think we must have her back. Yes, give her courage. Look, there's something happening on the street. Wait, let's go. Hurry! Grabber, get away from those mice. They're blind. Stop bullying. 
morning, Cinderella. How's work again? Yes, parents. There's a lot of work to be done. Tiptoe, long tail, squeak. Yes, Cinderella does all the housework, like watering the plants, folding the clothes, making the bed, setting the table, sweeping the floor. I've got something, a surprise. The prince is holding a party. He will choose his princess. Not interested. No, no, no. You must go. I will get to be the royal cat if you go and get selected. Sorry to burst your bubble grabber, but I'm not a China tea set to be selected. And I don't want to marry. Not now anyways. Cinderella! Oh no, my sisters. I better get going, Cinderella. Thank you, parents. Good day. What seems to be your emergency? I would like to find a missing person Ah, uh, not another one of these late night Lulus. Okay lady, calm down. How long has this Cinderella been missing? Well, she was supposed to return home from Prince Charming's ball at the stroke of midnight, but she never arrived. And does she have a glass slipper too? What time is it now? 12.30 a.m. You are telling me that she's half hour late from returning to a ball at the Prince's castle. And you already want to fill out a missing person's report? Give me a break, lady. No, you don't understand. She was just not interested in going to the ball. But fairy godmother, you forced her. She was to return home before the clock struck 12. Seriously? Maybe you need to get more sleep. This is the emergency hotline. Give us a call back in 24 hours if she hasn't shown up by then. But I know something is wrong. Can you please just send over a unit to the prince's castle and see what they can find out? There's a prince? Could you give me the address please? The castle, Kingdom Avenue. Okay, I'll see who's available at this hour of the night. Go to the castle and wait for a detective. Oh, thank you, thank you. Bippity bappity boo. A glass shoe I'll make for you. Thanks, but no thanks. A glass shoe is a useless idea. Go to the castle and wait for a detective, like I told you. Please hurry. Well, I was. But may I know why you are so interested? I am Tintin, a detective by profession. And I am here in my own personal capacity. Well, me and my friend have been reading about Cinderella's heart. And Bianca here has composed a song. And I am a soprano. People call me the Milanese Nightingale. I wish to produce the best opera performance ever on her life. I need her permission and her signatures. Could we have a discussion on this? After all, Cinderella is going to be my wife soon. Absolutely not. I'm not signing you. I'm signing her. And it is her signatures that I want. Not yours, husband. So, where, where is, is she? She, she has, has disappeared! disappeared. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Really? Yes. We had been dancing all night. When all of a sudden, right at the stroke of midnight, she ran off. What did you say that made her run off so quickly? Yeah, what did you say, Buster? He told her that, that she was the most beautiful girl in the world and that he wanted to marry her immediately. Imagine forcing a girl like that! No wonder 
does she run away? Who does he think he is? Can he force a girl just because he's the prince of the land? Quiet. No, we will not be quiet. We will not. Whoa, whoa! What are you all doing? What is all of this? You are, we hope, the only living relic who thinks he has found the wife just because a girl has beautiful blue eyes. What do you know about Cinders? Cinders? That's what we call her, and we have friends. You have fallen in love with her blue eyes, but you know they may have just been colored contact. She was wearing the most beautiful dress, but she could have stolen from somewhere just for a day. She came in the most distinguished carriage that could have been higher. Will you stop? Away with you. Don't you realize I rule this place? I invited you all here and now I think it's best if you all would leave. We haven't had food. The wine hasn't been exhausted yet. And you want to wait and see if Cinderella comes back. Shoo! All of you, shoo! I hate him! Move, move! Your Majesty, please, may we take a little time to interview you? All of you, what are you all doing here? We are here at Prince Charming's palace. Breaking news, we are the first to report to you from a spot where Cinderella disappeared. Where is Cinderella? The nation wants to know. How long have How you long known this Cinderella? I met her earlier this evening, near the buffet table. Is it true that you proposed marriage to her? Why yes it is. You mean... Tell me that you only knew her for a couple of hours and you were already proposing marriage? Yes. I've been searching for my whole life. Don't you believe in love at first sight? Did you intimidate her into, pro into agreeing to your proposition? I swear, I would never hurt her. I did find this glass slipper that fell off her foot while she was running away. Maybe this can help you find her. Where do we start looking for Cinderella? Oh, you could start by questioning Cinderella's stepsisters. She kept on telling me how mean they were to her. Find me a stepsister! Name? Florinda. Okay, Florinda. Where were you when Cinderella disappeared? I was sitting by the punch ball, waiting for my chance to dance with the prince. Did Cindy dancing with Prince Charming make you jealous? No, of course not. I want to marry Aladdin and roam around the world on the beautiful carpet. I have no space for Prince Charming. Aladdin, Florinda, you seriously believe in fairy tales? Yeah! Cindy is always so busy cleaning the house. She never thinks for herself. She's always looking for me and my sister. It's kind of annoying actually. We always have to leave us alone and go out and have some fun. But she's always like, okay, I just want to finish sweeping the floor or I just want to finish this dress or you get the idea. So you guys have no idea why Cinderella disappeared in the middle of the night for no reason? Not at all. Maybe she forgot that she had a souffle in the oven or something. Why are you pulling me like this? We found a big bad wolf sitting under a tree, huffing and puffing. I was sitting in a tree to catch my breath. It was a mad man chasing the knife. Anywho, where were you this evening? Around midnight? I was waiting in a tree for Red Riding Hood as we were to have dinner together. Dinner with a little Red. Oh. Or maybe you just wanted to pounce on her and eat her up at the first given chance. I would never eat her. You're right. It's true because Wolfie is a vegetarian. What? Vegan actually. I do not believe in cruelty to animals, humans included. Well then, why did I see you running from Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother's house howling like you were in pain? That's because a man came by the house and looked through the window. He had a big knife and blood all over his clothes. He put his head through the open window and said he was going to give it to me. That was me. I was the one in the night. I didn't mean to scare anyone. I was on my way home from the butcher shop and I still had my apron on and I always carry my knife. You'll never know he'll be in the woods. But that still doesn't explain why you chase Mr. Wolf shouting this is for Granny. This is for Granny. I was delivering a fresh cut pork chop which has to be refrigerated. By the way, I was running after the wolf trying to give him the package. So, in the attempt to elude the police, did you happen to see Cinderella? No, I didn't see Cinderella. I think I saw her. At first, I thought it was a knife-wielding man, but then I realized it was a young
young girl. Come to think of it, actually, she did have blonde eyes like Sinjala. I saw her run to a house in the forest. I would have followed her, but I was just too concerned about a wolfie. You too. Let's go see if Cinderella is anywhere close by. Or I'll half fear and I'll pop What is wrong with you? Everyone, step back. I want to get that open. Um, okay. Professor Calculus! I have calculated the exact value of the royalty that we have to pay Cinderella for using a story in Mrs. Catter's Rover Opera. Professor Calculus, Cinderella is lost and now we are looking for her. There is a lovely girl sleeping upstairs in Baby Bear's bed. But what the heck were you doing? Sleeping in baby bag bed. I rented a room of Airbnb. We didn't put a room on Airbnb, did we? No, no we didn't. No room and me. Is your name Berenstein? No, Berenstein lived two houses over. Oh, my bad. It seems we're back to square one. Maybe you should check the gingerbread house at the end of the block. Who the heck glues candy all over the outside of their house? Hmm, a house of gingerbread you say? Sounds suspicious. Let's go and check. Who is it? We are looking for a young missing woman. Well, she isn't here, so leave me alone. Do you mind if we take a quick look inside? Fine, but like I already told you, no one is here except for me and Snow White. Is that apple pie I smell? Why yes it is, Witchy and I are baking pies for the dwarves. Working in mines all day really does drum up a large appetite. This is the night we catch up on some of our favorite television programs. Do you know what it's like sharing a TV with seven dwarves? I, I can, can imagine. imagine. I guess our trail has gone cold once again. As cold as baby bass porridge. Ah, ah, ah. Next door to this house lives this beautiful young woman and her beastly looking husband. I mean he can't be a real beast. Maybe they have seen Cinderella. Let's go and check. Would you listen to that? He's yelling at her. There isn't a darn thing but imagination and lies and tricks. I have been on to you from the start. And not once did you pull the wool over my eyes. We have to do something. Step away from the woman. Ma'am, are you okay? Well, I'm perfectly fine. What are all of you doing on our porch at this hour? It's okay. We are here to help. You don't have to put up with a beast like that. Beast? He's the kindest, most generous person I know. I can explain. What you heard was my wife and I rehearsing a scene from Tennessee Williams. A streetcar named Desire. Okay, okay. Enough of the theater reviews. We still have no Cinderella and all our leads have gone dry. There's only one more house left in the forest. The toy maker's cottage. Let's go check it out! Good morning. What seems to be the problem, officer? Did you happen to see a girl around in the forest? Yes, I have. 
blue eyes and she was about this tall was she wearing a glass slipper too what an odd question come to think of it she was holding one glass slipper my father gave her a pair of wooden clogs and a sweater to wear you mean your father the toy maker spoke with her as well yes of course where did they go and i can't believe i'm having a con station with a wooden doll i am going to be a real boy someday anything can happen when you wish upon a star sure whatever where's your father he left with cindy you know her name and you're telling us now you never asked me her name you asked me what she looked like how do you know her name my father called her that and then she started crying he gave her the clothes and the sweater and then they left where did they go see because here they come Cinderella Step away from the wagon and put your hands in the air. What did you do to her? She's dead. What? You murdered her. Wait, hold on. Take it easy. What I'm trying to say is she's dead tired. See for yourself. Hey, Cindy, are you awake? I am now. Who are you guys? First of all, why the heck would you ditch from the bar so fast? I can answer that. <gasps> I made it so that at the final stroke of midnight the beautiful gown she was wearing would be turned back into rags and the cards that brought her to the ball would be turned back into a measly little pumpkin. Why would you ever do that to a girl? I don't know, it's kind of my thing. We're all strange in our ways. How come I? That's not why I ran from the prince. Then why? I ran because I wanted to think. I wanted to understand myself. I wanted to ask myself what I wanted out of life. And I don't really care how many velvet vests you own or what are all the names of your horses. And I'm sorry I used magic to look good and attract you, even though I'm least interested in being a princess. Okay, then what happened? Well, then prince over here got down on one knee. I knew I had to escape. So, I did the oldest trick in the book. You played dead? No, I said, "Look, a unicorn." And pointed behind him. As soon as he turned, I ran like the castle was on fire. Sat back and took a breath, and then just kept running until I came upon a little toy shop where I heard the most beautiful singing. As soon as I heard that beautiful falsetto, I knew there was only one person who could sing like that. The Bee Gees. <gasps> the voice I recognized was that of my grandfather Gimbeto. She had a glass slipper with her. I mean. Why would you not make a glass slipper? Got it. Point made. Bad idea. Noted. When Grandpa went into the room, that wooden boy over there. Did he just call me a boy? <sighs> Grandpa took me back to my childhood home, the home I lived before my mother died. The poor thing lost track of time and fell asleep on the cold stone floor. So I gently scooped her up and placed her in her favorite old red wagon. Well, it seems like another case has been solved. Wait, wait. How about you make me a real boy? Mm, well, now I think I'm kind of losing my mojo. None of my plans are working out anymore. Oh, come on. So now I will start planning for the wedding. Oh, congratulations. You're getting married. But 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 I would never marry anyone without spending enough time with them and getting to know them well. So I cannot marry you now, Prince Charming. What? But I'm the prince. You cannot refuse the prince. I need to understand you as a human being. Now that we have found you, we have a proposal. Another proposal? A business one this time. So here is the deal. Bianca is making a story out of your life, and she will perform it at the opera by herself. We wish to pay you twenty-five percent of the proceeds. I agree. Please say yes. I think you're the most beautiful person in the world, and your innocence shines too. I would love to present your story to the world. I agree, on one condition: you do not paint my parents and stepsisters in a bad light. The fault is not there alone. I need to stand up for myself, and I'm learning how to do that now. I agree. Start a business, a cleaning service, which will offer cleaning to homes, offices, and schools. But I thought you were the happy and home type. I am not any type. I was at the ball when I was born, so I ran away and sat in my favorite spot at the forest. Who are you? 
We are the forest nymphs. We have come to help you think. So, you know what I'm thinking about? Once upon a time, there was a princess. Day after day, night after night, the princess waited for her prince charming. Happily ever after, it was the only thing she ever wanted. And so she waited and waited and waited into the dark of a thousand nights, hoping for something as beautiful as love. And so she cried and cried and cried. And when the tears dried up and the silence landed, she heard a whisper from the ancient well of her own heart. There is no Prince Charming. There is no Prince Charming. There, there is no Prince Charming. But there are two feet that you can stand on, two eyes that you can open. There is the earth beneath your feet. And within you, there is a brain that thinks, a heart that feels, a soul that knows. Trust the knowing. Open your eyes. You are not meant to be rescued. You are not meant to run away. But to realize that you, my princess, are a hero you have been waiting for. So, now I'm starting this business. Professor Calculus, would you be my financial advisor? Sure. So that's great. All is well that ends well. Learn it from here. I will do my work as the prince and govern my people better. But hey everyone, there's still plenty of food over at my castle. Let's go and finish that party. Hooray!